What is up guys, Stas here, welcome back to another video, hope you all had a great Friday, great end to your week, the market sure did, I mean take a look here, the S&P 500 went up 0.4%, the Dow and the NASDAQ went up 0.3%, and the Russell 2000 went up a whopping 1.4% on the day and today we're going to be talking more about the markets breaking down some technicals going over seven stocks to buy now and i also want to share with you guys what i did in the markets today what stocks i own right now and in general where my head is at overall as a trader and as an investor so if you guys find value hit the like button subscribe to the channel make sure to go down below get into the strive smart discord chat the facebook group get two free stocks from webull m30 bucks Free from M1 Finance. All of those are, again, free and linked right down below. Same with the Patreon. If you guys want to support me and the channel a bit further, check out the Patreon. It is linked right down below in the description box. So let's get into it. The markets uh, in specifics are specifically the S&P 500 hit an all-time high today. S&P 500, again, went up 0.4%, up 15 points, and the all-time high was at 38.94 and not to toot my own horn i don't like doing that here on the channel uh but i'm going to right now we called it out we called this out we called out this move because we were aware of this overall uptrending channel that the s p 500 was in and we understood not only the macro trend here but we also understood what was going on in the nitty gritty and the 20 day chart, the five day chart. We understood that what we saw was consolidation range bound consolidation pretty much between 3825 and 3860 that's what we saw these past couple of days right you know pretty much ever since the 20th of january up until today that we broke out of uh 3860 3870 um we were pretty much range bound here and i told you all if we break 3830 3840 like we talked about yesterday on the bottom side that would not be good for the bulls obviously but if we took out 3860 3870 which now we can see we did that yesterday um if you uh, if you guys remember we did that yesterday um at the close of the market we broke out and the fact that we did that yesterday should have led you to believe that today was more likely to be well i don't want to say that because nobody knows but the fact that we broke out of the resistance yesterday we gained momentum let's just say that was a good sign heading into today and now that we pull back to that four hour chart what we can see is we got pretty dang close to that resistance of this channel and i said yesterday i wouldn't be surprised if the s p went to 3900 and we were about five six points uh shy here so where are we going to go from now um we possibly could gap up further maybe 3900 plus 3905 3910 that is possible but i'm leaning more towards a retracement and where could we retrace i mean I would think maybe 3860, 3870. Again, that was a big resistance. That was uh, where we were in the range pretty much for the past couple of trading days. I think if we can pull back and maybe hold 3850, 60, 70 as support, maybe from there we can go up higher. Um, but again, nobody knows what's going to happen. We could end up just shooting straight up over 3900. But as of now, we hit an all time high. The uptrend is continuing. And uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below in the comments. I would love to know. Nothing crazy. I mean, this is not uh, too crazy um, to read here. If it was more complicated, we would spend more time on it. But let me know down below. What do you guys think? Are you buying? Are you selling stocks? Are you long, short? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. Now, for me, guys, it's Friday. And, <clears throat> excuse me, my motto on Friday is not to force anything, especially if you've had a great week. And I had a pretty solid week this week, and I didn't force anything. And just because I didn't buy anything today... It, uh, it doesn't mean that I didn't have open positions. I still have open positions. I mean, I'm in a bunch, guys. I'm in, I'm in what, like five, six positions right now. And we'll talk later in this video about seven others that I'm very, very, um, you know, I'm very, ha I'm not happy about, but <clears throat> excited about is the better word. So I'm in 
Workhorse, you guys know that. I'm still in Workhorse. I locked in some profits on it yesterday. It went down a bit today, about 2%. Still holding on tight there. SLV went up about 2% today. Um, I'm in this one still. AMD is another one that is still hovering at about 88 bucks. Didn't do anything today. Pretty much broke even. And for this to pick direction, guys, we really have to break out of uh, 89.90. That's the sticking point on AMD. I think if we could break that, this uh, 180 SMA rather, on this hourly chart, that is where I think AMD in the short term could gap up to 95. So I'm holding on still with a small position of uh, AMD. And NEO is another one I'm still in. Did not do so well. Down almost 2% today, 1.6% to be exact. And at this point in time, NEO is still struggling at this resistance. You guys can see we hit a, a high of 67, lower high of 63, and a bunch of lower highs after that. And uh, yeah, we're not breaking out quite yet. We are still in a descending triangle, which is a bit worrisome because if we end up breaking under, let's say 54, like I've mentioned before in these videos, I think we could gap down to the low 50s. I don't think we're going to get high 40s, mid 40s. I could be wrong, but I think low 50s could be the low point. That's if we take out 55 on the bottom side. But on the uh, uh, top side here, I want to see a big sticking point here from this past week of trading is 58, 59, 60. That is where um, I think we could end up going a lot higher if that point ends up breaking. So watch out for that when it comes to NEO. I'm still holding on to my shares. SQ, I still have my position open here. This went up again today, up 1.1%. Tattoo Chef is back from the dead, guys. Ticker symbol TTCF. I'm also still in this one today. It went up almost 1.2%. Closed a little bit under 25 bucks. And what I am seeing here is an inverse head and shoulder. Take a look. Let me show you this. Left shoulder right here. Boom. Right shoulder, or rather the head right here. And this could be the right shoulder forming right here. And where, I mean, where could we go if the right shoulder completes? I mean, look, necklines at about 24 bucks. You guys can see that right here. So that is where we held as support today. Where could we go if the right shoulder completes? I'm thinking 27. Let me extend this to the right. I'm thinking 27. That could be a nice move right here um, of about 9-10% on Tattooed Chef, which is why I'm in it. Um, I'm holding on to shares. I'm not in options. And, in fact, none of these are options plays. But I'm just holding on to, to that position. And, yeah, I think it could get to 27 30 bucks. Ultimately, that is where I think it's going to go, and that's why I'm holding. And SB is another one that I'm still holding. This one, I think, is a $43 to $46. Um, that's where I think it's going to go. My, me personally, again, guys, don't buy any of these on my opinion, but when I'm looking at this, I can see this easily 45 plus, so I'm still in that one, holding on to that, and I'd love to know what you guys are doing. Let me know in the comments, what are you up to? Are you holding stocks? Are you selling before the weekend? Let me know, and if you all are enjoying the video, make sure to hit the like button and get your 30 free bucks. What are you waiting for from M1 Finance? That is linked down below. You can literally open up an account deposit any amount of money and if you don't like m1 you can just take that 30 dollars back and the same goes with weeble you could get two free stocks right now from weeble go down below check that out and now let's get into the seven stocks that they're so close to breaking out guys i mean gosh i think maybe not all of these are going to break out next week we don't know obviously what's going to happen but i i think some of these will will be in play so the first one is Target, ticker symbol TGT. This is one that hit a high of 204. And now that I'm looking at this, guys, um, I completely missed that move. I mean, you could even see my analysis here from a couple weeks ago. We drew this wedge on Target. We can see it was downtrending from 182 to 170, but it was also holding 170 as support. And we said if 170 breaks, and you can see the arrow right here that I was doing my analysis a couple weeks ago, uh, you can see the arrow. I said if 170 breaks, hey, maybe we go back to 180, 190. I didn't know it was going to go to 200, but now with hindsight, the benefit of hindsight, we see that it did go to 200. 
and it's back to the 188s now, 189, and we're yet again we ha- uh, we have found ourselves in this wedge. So I'd love to see what Target does here, and and you can see clearly it held 176. It's been making um, you know higher highs, higher lows these past couple of trading days, about five six trading days. So I think next week if we could break 190, that's the big sticking point. And 192 even, I think, uh, you know, TGT could gap out or gap up rather high 190s. Heck, maybe back to 200. Who knows? So watch out for Target. This is Brink uh, on the brink of a breakout, in my opinion. And these other or these next two stocks here, they have uh, pretty much practically the same pattern. Um, It's weird. BNGO, Bionanogenomics. This is one that If we zoom in on this hourly chart, we can see the overall wedge that it's in here. It's holding that 180 SMA. It's trying to at least um, here today. It's holding the uh, the higher low. It's holding that here at about 10, 11 bucks. And it's also making lower highs, hence the wedge that we are in. So for me to go long on BNGO here, I'd like to see a push mid 11s. I mean, 1150, 1175 would be nice. But I think if 12 could break, that could be a move, uh, a, a momentum move back to the 13s, high 13s, maybe even 14s. And we thought that this was the day it was going to break out back on the 2nd of February. It actually popped from 1075 to 13. But now with uh, hindsight, the benefit of hindsight again, we can see that this pop to 1320 was simply a lower high. And uh, we squeezed ourselves deeper into this wedge. So this upcoming week is going to be a deciding factor for direction here on BNGO. Are we going to break out, go to 12, 13, 14, or are we going to dump and maybe go back down to the single digits again? Who knows? Um, That's what I'm looking at here for BNGO. And again, it's pretty much the same pattern as this nano dimension, ticker symbol NNDM. This one hit a high of $18, hit a lower high of $16.20. Now today, although it did go up 1.2%, it's at another lower high potentially of about $15, although we have been also making higher lows, higher low at $13.20, $13.75, and today at $14.60. So what direction are we going to pick? Are we going to break out? Of uh, let's say 15 bucks, mid 15, 16s. If so, 18 could be coming. And I've seen people say 20 bucks and NDM that could also be coming. So I'm looking out for that. But again, on the flip side, if we take out 14, 13 bucks on the bottom side, that would not be too good. And one here is uh, BL. MK, another one, Blink Charging. This is one where, take a look at this. This is very key. What you guys see right here is an inverse head and shoulder. We uh, we see here, left shoulder, we have the head, we have the right shoulder forming as we cupped, uh, we, I don't know if that's even a saying, but we, we formed a cup, let's just say that. We're curling up here from 54, we went down to 50, um, now we at, are back at 54. So this, again, is the right shoulder and the inverse head and shoulder. So I think if this could complete... Where would we be going? Yeah, you read it right. Take a look at that. 62 to $64. That is what I'm seeing here on the hourly chart. That gives Blink charging upwards of 15% potential from here. And it makes sense because if we pull back to that four-hour chart, take a look at this. The four-hour chart, what we see is BLNK is moving beautifully in this uptrending channel. Higher highs, higher lows. And now that you see this inverse head and shoulder within the overall, the larger, you know, uptrending channel, it makes sense that, okay, we're going to fill to 64 potentially and maybe go even higher, 68, 69, which would be the resistance of this uptrending channel. And based on the channel recently, the past couple of weeks, you know, we've been making all time highs. So it's not crazy to think that BLNK could go back up to 65, 68. I think it's possible, but you guys have to be patient as always. Nobody knows how quick these moves will be, but yeah, those are just some thoughts there on BLNK. And at any point of the video, what, uh, let me know if you have any thoughts. Let me know those thoughts down below in the comments. I would love to talk to you guys as always. 
And I have three more, and this video is pretty short. Usually my update videos are like 25 minutes. We're only 13, 14 minutes in, so let's see how, we, uh, uh, how we're doing on time later on. But we have three more here, FedEx, ticker symbol FDX, and by no means is this chart the most attractive out of the bunch today. In fact, it's probably the least attractive. I mean, it's still at a pretty tough spot, but I think if you are willing to buy into this overall dip from 305 to 255, let's say it shed 50 bucks, that's about 16, 17, 18%, so it's almost in a bear market. If you're willing to buy here and maybe ride out some volatility, again, I'm not a financial advisor, this could be a dip that you look back on in a couple months, a year, two years, and you're like, yes, I'm so happy I bought FedEx at 250 Now it's at 350 for example, or 400 Nobody knows where it's going to be, but you guys get what I'm saying. And the technicals, again, they're not the most attractive, but they're trying to turn around. A good sign that we're seeing here is we broke out of the downwards channel from 305 to 240. That was a rough about, uh, what, a month almost for FedEx. I mean, they got slaughtered. The stock went down about 20%. So it was in a bear market as the stock market in general was hitting high. So that goes to, to tell you something there. That's pretty interesting. And we broke out of that channel. We tried to break 260. Notice 260 is a big level of resistance stemming back from September, back from uh, you know October. We held 260 in October and November as well as support. And once you break a support, it becomes resistance, right? So I think if 260 could break, that is where um, we might see a turnaround in FedEx stock. And I don't know where it's going to go, obviously, but one could guess that overall a, a big resistance that would be, a, you know, would be a big brick wall for FedEx after 260 is going to be about 290. So this 30-point window, it's, uh, it's fair game in my opinion if 260 breaks, this 180 SMA breaks on the four-hour chart. And I, I might I might go, I don't know if I'm going to go long shares, but I might play this kind of as a, maybe a, a call option play. I don't know. We'll see. But I think from 260 to 280, 275, that could be a playable move there on FedEx. So I'm watching that. And one here that is uh, not the not the coolest stock by any means, but I think it could be a slow, steady money maker these next couple of weeks. And again, I'm not a financial advisor, guys, but I'm looking at Colgate ticker symbol CL as a pretty decent dip. And the price action today went up 1.2 percent. We broke out of that 50 SMA. Overall, it seems like we are holding the uptrend. This pr uh, price action is quite attractive to me. Not gonna lie. And uh, I could see it going up to 83, right around that 180 SMA. That's going to be another big resistance test on the four hours. So from 79, 80 bucks to 83, that could be a move here. That could be a move of about 4%. And if we could break 83, that 180 SMA on this four hour chart, that could be uh, uh, what we need to see to get back up to the higher 80s, mid high 80s, which could give this CL play. 7 8%, maybe 10% potential for profit from where it is right now. So CL, again, it's not the coolest company. You're not going to get rich. But if you're looking at a dip buy on a blue chip stock that, yeah, I mean, it seems like all of these dips in the past couple of years have been bought up. You have to realize, hey, this one could be bought up as well, and we could make some slow, steady money there. So watch out for CL. And I'm not sure if you guys caught my video earlier, but earlier we talked about Zoom, and I'll link that video down below. It's about a 10-minute video going more in-depth on Zoom, technicals, breaking it down, and all that stuff. I'll link that down below in the description. But Zoom here is finally turning around. This stock went up almost 8% today. We broke out of 395, 400. That's a good sign. Now we're looking to fill the gap up to 430. And it's about time. I mean, this is one that was struggling ever since the middle towards the end of October, kind of as we got the V shot out there, we got some, you know, the, um, you know, tensions dying down, whatever you want to call it, around the CV and so forth. That's kind of, at, you know, why we've seen this drop over the past couple of months. But I think 
it's uh, it's getting ready to rip back up. So we're seeing it pop, and I'm pretty happy about that. Although I'm not a shareholder, um, you know, I think there could be some money to be made here. And again, go check out that link down below in the description if you want to see a more in-depth video on Zoom. I guarantee you'll find some value in there. And again, it's linked right down below. So we'll just wrap it up here. It's Friday. You might as well just make the video short. Uh, 20 minutes today. If you all enjoyed it, hit the like button. Make sure to go down below, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to get into the Strive Smart Discord chat. It's free. Same with the Facebook group. And you could also get two stocks from Weeble valued up to sixteen hundred dollars. All you have to do, uh, all you have to do to actually get those. What is it? It's uh, yeah, it's a hundred bucks. You deposit a hundred bucks, you get the two free stocks, and you also can get thirty bucks from M1 Finance by opening up an account and putting in any amount of money. So go check those out. All of those are free. Link down below. Same with the Patreon. If you guys want to support me and the channel a bit further, check out that Patreon. There's only one tier right now, but in the next couple of days over the weekend, I'm going to put some work together on the Patreon um, for the Patreon. So yeah, go check that out. It's linked right down below in the description. And that's it. I'll catch you all in the next video again. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Keep crushing the markets, guys. Peace out.